Now, what is the global prophet prophecy for the year 2020? The global peace accord. <laughs> it's a year of rising and a year of falling. Hear me, it's a year of war. It is a year of war. Now, 2020 religion prophecy. There will be churches at war. War. War among churches and religions in the land. Fight for territorial control will be much more rampant, particularly among the Christian, the charismatic churches. This is the year people must serve God and not men. Hear it? Serve God and not men. So there will be so many war, religion war, war in the churches. And then, in the same year, 2020 is a year of Christian restoration. God will restore his glory in his kingdom to the church and genuine house of the Lord. Why false and fake churches and fake acclaimed prophets of God, they will be exposed, they will be displaced around the world, particularly in Africa and every largest Christian country around the world. The true children of God shall be free and they shall be established in their Christian dominion kingship. The secret of so many false prophets will be opened and their prey will be free to their freedom. The house of the Lord shall yet be increased and people shall worship God in truth and in spirit. Shalom to the Bride of Christ worldwide and God bless you. This is Reflections and today we are reflecting on a trending issue on social media, the newly enacted Kama law which was passed into law by the federal government of Nigeria on the 7th of August 2020. Leadership of the Christian Association of Nigeria has rejected the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020 that was recently assented to by President Muhammadu Buhari. The umbrella body of Christian denominations in the country say the law is unacceptable and a time bomb waiting to explode. Of which Christian bodies in Nigeria like CAN, Christian Association of Nigeria, PFN, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, Bishop David Oyediko, Apostle Johnson Suleiman of Omega Fire Ministries, and many others are kicking against calling this bill an illiterate bill. But Pastor Moses Alu of the Bride Assembly Lagos Church has a different thought on this bill, saying he's in support with the government. Let's listen to the comments of all of these preachers, and when we come back, Will reflect on this driver. But I still challenge the church leaders to go and read the law. I am made to believe that that law is a 600 page or 604 page document. So if they were reacting a day after the, the document was signed into law, it shows that they have not studied it. And I believe they have lawyers. They should study it. I know they are afraid because somebody is coming to control their business, but uh, it, should, it, should be, it, should be, it should be God. There must be a guide in the government, even overseas, whenever I went to overseas. I see my dissent. Why will Nigeria own be special? So I was so in love with Pastor Moses. If you have nothing to, fe to fear, if there is no skeleton in your cupboard, why are you afraid of trustee? One of the politics they do now to catch you because they know all the things you are doing. They know all the illegal things you are doing. You collect people's money and live on the people's money and refuse to account for it to the government. They have been overlooking and looking at all this nonsense some of you are doing. And now they are now setting a trap now that they will use and check you. Since you decided to join politics, let us do politics. But if I thought to reject, it's only to check our finance. I think uh, it's not bad. But in the other way around, if I thought it's to come and uh, tell us a mode of worship, what to preach and what not to preach and what, what, what we believe. 
I am totally against that. If it is that way. If it is that way, I am totally against that. Mm. But if I thought to come and check finance and every other thing, I think, I think uh, this is a church. Nothing is hidden in the church. Do you understand? I think everything is uh, transparent. What you should talk about is transparency. If you will say churches should, should submit their financial report, I will be the first. You know I will submit. Do you know I will submit? I will be so happy. So by the time you discover that what they are making a month is 5 million, but what the man is spending on people is 16 million, won't you balance me? You balance me now. I will be the happiest person. By the time you, in fact, they will call me and say, come, why are you spending your money? I said, so we say, I'm oh yeah, support me. The law says that your daily transactions, daily income and expenditures account should be kept and submitted annually, daily, annually with an audited account. The audited account that will present your daily expenses. You submit it to them for filing. Audited account, just like all companies do annually. And people don't want it done. I had one man of God saying, if they said, I think that's Apostle Suleiman. He said, if they say they, they want to know, the, the, if they say they want to know, if they say... If you will say churches should, should submit their financial report, I will be the first. Why are you saying if they say the law is there? So, Apostle Suleiman, you are reacting without reading it. What you are saying is exactly what the law says. They want transparency. They want us to be transparent. Every couple you receive in the name of that ministry, record it. And every couple you spend, record it. And if there is any church that does not maintain that type of account, then you are the reason why the government is enacting that law. It's wrong. We should be transparent. We are managing public funds. Therefore, it should be transparent. In my ministry, I have them recorded. Every cupboard that goes out is recorded, and monthly accounts are recorded. Monthly accounts are kept. And they say we should submit that annually to Abuja. What is the problem there? It's a simple thing. Why will I react? And I heard a man of God saying, if they see that oh, you receive it, you spent more than this. If you spent more than that, after all, it's a non-profit organization. It simply means you have used your own extra resources I'm made up for it. For, I mean, it's still part of expense. And to start with, why will you spend, by the time that your account is brought in, a non-profit making organization, your account is made up, made up then expenses are more than income. Did you do account at all? How can you spend from nothing? It simply means the ministry received it first before it is being spent. Or... You receive money that was not recorded. And if you spent money that is not recorded, you did not keep your account well. Because before spending it on behalf of the ministry, it's supposed to come into the ministry first. Before you do it. If not, why are you recording it as part of the expense of the ministry? Because everything coming in there is a donation. So if you, the pastor, decide to use your own money to also do certain things, if you are not going to do it, through the ministry, then don't bring it to the account of the ministry. So there will be no need for you to say you spent more than you received. That, 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 that's not accounting. No, that's wrong. Take notes. Did you hear anybody from Assemblies of God to talking? Do you hear anybody from Foursquare talking? Did you hear anybody from Catholic talking? Did you hear anybody from Methodist talking? Did you hear anybody from Presbyterian talking? Their leaders don't talk because this law that they put is already part of their system in their churches. Nobody remains a leader forever in any of these churches. They are organized with the terms. They change the leadership according to their constitution. The only people that are complaining are Pentecostal one-man family businesses called church. We are supposed to be like the fathers, you know, that the people will look up to because we have followership. So we should make sure that we talk in a way that we can be listened to, you know, by the authorities. There are some of us that have been written off by government. Anything they say, they know that you will never say anything, you know, good. So 
anything coming from that angle, nobody listens, and it's unfortunate. When you come to present us to that estate where we are no longer taken seriously, then you have eroded the whole basis of the faith. Uh, we must uh, watch against it. We, 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 the, the, pope, the Pope of uh, the Roman Catholic Church is one of the most respected because of the way he handles issues that affect humanity worldwide. He does not come by attacking anybody and insulting anybody and inciting his billions of followers around the world. That's why you see him is very respected. Uh, but you, you see our leaders here in Nigeria, see the way they talk. You just see that they talk like radicals. There's no, no serenity, no, not, nothing, nothing reference, no reference from their voice. Some of them talk like area boys. 16 years I've been running the ministry, paying salaries, supporting widows, supporting the poor. They appoint you board of trustee. You are mad. Sir, the church of Jesus is the greatest asset of this church, of this nation. Yes, sir. And I'm telling you with facts. Yes, we want to stifle the church. And then one man will remove the trustee of a church. How dare you and put a manager there? When? When did you become that dictator? When Jesus called me, were you there? When he called those apostles, were you there? We build according to his pattern, not your pattern. If you ask me, the karma law is God taking back his church. God opening the eyes of the understanding of most members. For them to know who their pastors are because some of these pastors their belly has become their god there is nothing wrong with the karma law the karma law is not the squeeze so they are not trying to squeeze the church but the bottom line is most of the pastors who are shouting or maybe laying courses we should ask them all the courses they've laid how many came to pass anoint the ground of this church on behalf of the church of christ in nigeria God anointed Jehu to destroy the house of Ahab. Anoint the ground of this church and call for the divine rescue of the church and judgment upon the assailants of the church of Christ. Go ahead and pray. Have you, have you seen bomb before? Heavenly bomb. When they hear it, they will not even hear word till they die. There are some of them statements they make that uh, need to be corrected maybe they don't even know the implication of what they are saying we are supposed to be running non uh, profit making organizations because of its philanthropic nature now i am the pastor of this church the bride assembly church for instance now there is me as the pastor acting on behalf of the ministry and there is me again as the individual Moses Alu. Now I can use I have and severally from my own personal resources I have offered scholarships to people I have helped people in so many ways philanthropic gesture from me as a person and that is why, even if I am to file in for taxation, this aspect that I do, if I can prove it, allowances are made for it in determining my tax to be paid. Now, so if I now stand and then I'm making it look as if it is the church that is doing it. Now, if you want the church, to, the world to look at it as if it is the church that is doing it, you will not say, I did it. The church that I use my money. You will say, we did it. Because a church is not run by one man. A church is run by a body of believers. Every local church. Now I'm hearing one saying, after I use my money, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. Are you doing body land? Buy the, uh, build, the, uh, build the building? The church that I use my money to finance, my sweat? They can't try it too in my own church. That shows you a philanthropist. It has nothing to do with the church. 
And nobody is going to question you for that. But if it is the church that is going to do, then it must enter the church accounts and must be accounted for because you are doing it under the cover that the government has given you the registration you have. And the government wants to know what you are doing with the money. You protesting, you may be honest until you are so honest like um, and so much philanthropic like Apostle Suleiman that loves you know, philanthropic gestures and many other pastors. But while you are honest, there are other pastors that are thieves, are robbers. And government is seeing what they are doing with the finances. Now, when you can talk for yourself, you talk for yourself, but you cannot talk for the body of Christ generally because there are criminals behind the pulpit. There are criminals that have taken advantage of the provisions of the Bible. And there, even the Bible that you are holding tells you there are false prophets. There are false pastors. Even there are false brethren. So what are you saying? If there are false people, then the activities are criminal. And government should step in and check it. So I believe those of you, uh, Oyedepo, uh, Suleiman, uh, who else? You, your, your philanthropist gestures, you believe uh, are being attacked. It's, that it's not you. And it's not even your own choice. Stop talking generally for everybody. There are criminals. Those of you, you are honest, you are philanthropists, you will hear so many things you do for people. Praise God for that. But don't talk as if there are no criminals in the church. You are trying to give them cover to continue their criminality by such actions. It is wrong. Now, what is the global prophecy for the year 2020? The Global Peace Accord. <laughs> it's a year of rising and a year of falling. Hear me, it's a year of war. It is a year of war. Now, 2020 religion prophecy. There will be churches at war. War, war among churches and religions in the land fight for territorial control will be much more rampant, particularly among the Christian, the charismatic churches. They Let the law of karma stay so that it will check all of us. It's God using it to bring us back to the preaching of the gospel. Concentrate on what God has called you to do. Leave the rest to God. He will take care of it. Anybody who wants to use his position to scuffle the progress of the church of God? It's not your cause that you cause them from your pulpit that we walk. Some of you come behind the pulpit and cause the government and cause all this your cause. What did it produce? Nothing. We will use fasting and prayer to kill you. Other people are looking. What are you people saying? Is this strange? It's not strange. To all the orthodox churches they are organized only the pentecostal churches are complaining me here i am also a pentecostal church hallelujah but i stay within my calling i stay within my ministry praise the lord if the government comes and decide the trustee of the church to start with the trustee of the church my wife is not a trustee member of this church if you remove me you have not stopped me from preaching there have not been any situation where they are asking us to get a license before we preach. That is what we should have been fighting if this law says that we should be given a license to preach. Because the message is more important than the money. Because it is the message that makes the people. It is the gospel that takes people to heaven and not the money that they are fighting for. Because whatever they are talking about concerning the karma law, that the church leaders are fighting, it has only to do with the gospel as it preaching the message. It has 100% to do with the finances of the church. And what are we going to worry? I mean, it's criminals that are, affect, uh, that are afraid of breaking the law. We are supposed to be space setters when it comes to being lawful and uh, living by the rules. I, I, I just, I don't know why this is attracting any form of a controversy and what still why did they wait until the law was passed was it secretly passed they had the argument they would have done that before the law 
uh, was ever enacted. But whatever it is, uh, everybody is entitled to their opinion, their understanding. My response is according to my understanding, and their response too will certainly be according to their understanding. I'm just exercising my right of We are not envying anybody. We are standing on the truth because we are revelated. We are fearless. What he said, we stand by that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, so uh, I stand by him, and uh, we stand by him as a church, as a revelation. You see, it will be difficult for you to come out with the truth. Sincerity and integrity is a, is, is a function of revelation, ah, brother. If you are not revelated, you cannot come out. You can't come out naked. You can't come out with a naked truth. So, and once you are there, once you are on that side of saying the truth, being a revelated person, the world will be against you. The world are in the majority. They are 95%, we're only very few. But to me, as a person, our hope is not on this earth. So even if they bring anything to come and they know the way for as long as they are not controlling you of what you preach. Where I will have problem with the government is to impose on us what to preach. But as long as they are not imposing on us what to preach, I have no problem with them. You build schools, they cannot afford this school. For your 200 naira or 20 naira of tithe and offering, you build a mighty school. Those people that contributed cannot even afford to send their children there. These are the things people look into. They want to see your conduct, your activities. If you are in line of what you are preaching. So I agree with Pastor Moses. Because if you read the scripture very well, this is the beginning. The time will come when we pay tax to enter church to pray to God. My calling is to preach and not to be trusted. Trustee is not part of my calling. Let them enact any law, it doesn't concern me. Let's stop all this politics because it has its effect. When those who have power now clamp on you, then you say it is a squeeze. It is not a squeeze. You are suffering for your actions, for your criminality. They have been rubbing mice with the politicians. They've been eating together for a long time. So since they become politicians, the politicians want to play politics with them. That's what we see. But coming to Kama Law, there is nothing wrong with it. Of course, it's people's resources. So you should be able to give account. The way that they are uh, uh, really fighting. Now, what is the global prophet prophecy for the year 2020? The Global Peace Accord. <laughs> it's a year of rising and year of falling. Hear me, it's a year of war. It is a year of war. Now, 2020 religion prophecy. There will be churches at war. War. War among churches and religions in the land. Fight for territorial control will be much more rampant, particularly among the Christian, the charismatic churches. The Against this is the right way. And I want to say that it has nothing to do with Antichrist. And this is not the sign. I've read the Bible, which you also have read. This is not one of the signs of the Antichrist. I want anybody to challenge me on this and prove it through the Bible. Hmm. Because the money we are talking about is perishable. Every office is perishable, but the office of your salvation cannot be. So that office of preaching the truth, as long as they don't touch it, they are free. Let them do what about the water. Wow. Don't give it that. God. Mark my words, I will write it down. Mm. So the camera law is in, is in order. They want to monitor people's activities, mm. financially, in any form. Mm. So it's right. I wish some of them can hear this and go to the Lord and ask for mercy. If not, all the kingdom you are building on earth, one day they will come with one paper and sweep it away from your feet. Welcome back. After listening to the comments of these preachers and the comments of the interviews we had, you would agree with me that you and I have to study and understand what is Kama law, what is the federal government trying to do, who should we stand with, who is right on this matter. Is Kama law set out against the Church of Jesus Christ or it is for the Church of Jesus Christ? Is the federal government trying to silence the Church of Jesus Christ. These and many more. 
are things we ought to reflect on. Now, what is the global prophecy for the year 2020? The Global Peace Accord. <laughs> it's a year of rising and a year of falling. Hear me, it's a year of war. It is a year of war. Now, 2020 religion prophecy. There will be churches at war. War. War among churches and religions in the land. Fight for territorial control will be much more rampant, particularly among the Christian, the charismatic churches. The Let us know what you think on the comment section below as you go back and reflect on this matter. This is Reflection. God bless you.